it's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them, Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with the uh, University of Miami. Had another good block, and Toretta lays it out. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. There he is, Lamar Thomas. Boy, do I have a loaded up arsenal of questions for you tonight, Mr. Assistant Head Coach of the Orlando, is it Predators or Renegades? Guardians. The Guardians. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of puzzles that we have to solve tonight. But first, let's welcome everybody to the Wednesday night Lamar Thomas show presented. Let's get these. Um, let's get our sponsors up there on, on the screen um, so that everybody can see who is supporting this show. Presented as always by Canesware, where Lamar is tonight in the new Canesware store at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Uh, the largest Cane store ever created. I mean, th there's some other guys trying to trying to beat it, but uh, I don't know how that's going to go. But <laughs> but uh, the new Canesware at uh, 2655 South University Drive in Davie is without question your go to spot for Hurricanes gear right up the street from Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, we've got the law firm of Ratson and Baxadomo, where you can go get aggressive representation if you're ever in need. Uh, you don't ever want to be in need, of course, uh, but these attorneys will fix you up if you need aggressive representation. Uh, Williamson Cadillac, where LT buys all his automobiles. Um, we'll be talking more about them later in the show. And then, of course, the Florida Beach Bowl, the new game for historically black colleges that will be coming to Drive Pink Stadium uh, this December. It's getting here pretty close. Are we going to get to, yeah, and Los Patas, which feeds <laughs> LT, of course. What kind of sandwich did they give you this week? Same old, same old ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. With uh, mayonnaise and mustard and lots of pickles and pepper not the pe the the vegetable pepper but the, the chili peppers, salt and the hot yeah peppers. no not, yeah not the hot this yeah. is salt and pepper type yeah yeah i know what you're talking about yeah uh, that sounds pretty good but uh hey are we gonna get to talk about who's running the florida beach bowl this week well he, we we were supposed to but he uh got a little sick tonight uh so uh, we have to put it off to next week so he's wow. a little uh, under the weather so he was like man i so wanted to come on but We'll give him one more week. One more week, and he'll be here. <laughs> All right. Somebody told me Keith Tribble's involved. That's nice to hear. He, he is. He is. Yeah. Keith Tribble is involved, and uh, this thing has come along very fast, and they're putting it together, and uh, it's looking great so far. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting. All right, Lamar, let's dive into these Miami Hurricanes of ours. And uh, all right, let's say for back-to-back weeks, okay, <laughs> overtime victories. A win is a win is a win. Should we be in distress over this? Or should we be feeling good about the fact that they are winning these close games? I feel good. I don't know about the rest of everybody, but I feel good because let me tell you something. For years, it hadn't been a good feeling walking out of that stadium, okay? It's been losing, um, right? It's been losing, and I had to drown myself in drinking. And uh, since I don't drink anymore, I'm in. Just, I'm excited about the fact that we're winning ball games, and you know what I mean? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't drink anymore? No, nah, no. Nah. Every totally. since I, I, I took I, I took a break. Ever since I got back from the XFL, which caused me to drink a little bit. Uh I was think, hell, I think I've lost like 28 pounds. I was like two 228 and I'm like down to 195 now. And it has Did you a lot see to do with Orlando Franklin. Yes, I was gonna bring that up. Oh, Speaking of losing my. weight, I think he had my suit on. <laughs> This guy looks yes, good. yes. It looked like yes. he stole one of the suits out of your closets. Yes, and he he's going to come on the show at some point. He he, he told oh, me good. that he he would. Yeah, he's yes. Lt, so, I'm in the I'm in the elevator with him. Okay, now, <laughs> like think back to Orlando <laughs> Franklin, the offensive lineman. Yes, three hundred yes. pounds. He's you know yes. hulked yes. up. I mean, I'm. Uh, he says, "Hey, Gary, Orlando Franklin." <laughs> I'm like. Orlando, who? Yeah, uh, he says Orlando Franklin. You don't remember me? I'm like, he I'm was like, doing that to a lot of people. people. I don't remember what happened to two thirds of you. <laughs> like he is, he is. You could never recognize him. Well, the only reason why I knew it was him because I follow him on social media, and I've I've followed his journey, and it's been amazing uh, to see the uh, way he looks now. I mean, he looks like a basketball player. You know, so he's a tall basketball player, but uh, what a journey that's been. <laughs> so I said, Orlando, what happened? Like, wh- where are you? Like, I don't see you. <laughs> he's like, alcohol, man. He's like, I, I gave up. I, 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 I gave up the alcohol, and I started eating right, see? and you know, everything just kind of happened. Yeah. Uh, but he looks amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. Yes. They put it. They put him on television now. He's on the ACC yes. network doing yes. games. And yes, uh, wow, it's you know, it's so great to see former Hurricanes, you know, finding ways to make it out in the in the mm-hmm. world, man. It's all it's it's a tough world we live in, um, and and that's why we're doing this show to showcase right. them, man, and and give them a platform to tell their story and to see 100%. what they're doing now. All right, so back to business. So, all right, two close games, overtime oh. wins, and yes. yes we have been losing these games for years. Oh. You know, no, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, I mean, last year they lost every one of them. So there's the silver lining. Of now you're, you're winning mm-hmm. these games, but I was reading something today. Uh, and, and somebody was complaining about Florida state being ranked number four. They're undefeated. It's because of the ACC. People think the ACC is this horrible conference. And that's why FSU is not getting the respect in the polls. Uh, you know, in terms of the national championship playoff rankings, they're number mm. four right now behind Michigan, uh, Georgia, and Ohio State. And um, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, like, I think Miami is a much better football team. Um, I, I mean, you go across the board. Uh, okay, the quarterback's struggling a little bit. He's been hurt. You know, you can mm-hmm. whatever you want to attribute his erratic play to. Uh, the running backs are better. The O-line is massively better. I think the receivers are better than they were in, in the past. We haven't seen the tight ends. That's a problem we'll talk yeah, about. Um, you got Reuben Bain, this freshman phenom on the defensive line. And I'm not going to say better. You know, because we've had Jalen Phillips, we've had Greg Rousseau. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say better. You know, Reuben Bain is the next in line, um, but the defense is like number 25, 30 in the country. They're playing relatively well for the most part. I mean, giving mm-hmm. up some yards at times, but for the most part, playing pretty well. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not a bad Miami football team, correct? And that tells me that the ACC is not the worst conference in America, but mm-hmm. maybe there's just some parity in this conference. Yeah, there's some teams that, you know, you look at what Duke was able to do early in the year before injuries struck them down. Um, you know, there's some teams in this in this conference that have 
that are pretty decent teams, above decent. You know, the 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 Clemson has fallen some, and the other teams are taking their place. Uh, you know, when I look at the ACC, I don't see uh, a one team or two team conference right now. I see there's some teams that could be. I mean, Florida State right now is the talk of the town. Let's 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 be honest. Uh, but there's some teams that have given them a run for their money and made them struggle some and show that they are vulnerable, but they're, those teams are good. You know, uh, I'm liking what I see from these teams in ACC. Uh, you know, when they talk about them not getting the respect, I think it's because of some of those close games, but we all know this from going undefeated. You ain't going to blow everybody out. You know, there are going to be some games where you're going to have to learn to win. Mm-hmm. And regardless of what the score is like, you got a win is a win, you know, just like we would have taken the Georgia Tech win by one, whatever we would have taken that win. And, uh, you know, in hindsight now, looking back, you know, that that was a loss. And that was a terrible way to walk out of that stadium knowing that you had that game. And now since you're, you know, you have this record that could be one loss and, and going into this NC State game, you know, you kind of look back and, and shake your head but on the on the flip side of that hopefully the players learn the coaches learned and then some of these tight wins uh these overtime wins you learn how to be a winner you learn how regardless of what happens out there on that field you still find a way to pull that game out if you even if you didn't play your best you still have found a way to pull the game out you know, the other thing I think goes overlooked is coaches. Uh, there's some pretty good coaching going on in the ACC, I think. I mean, I, I, you know, I see, especially these defensive coordinators this year, seem to be stepping up to me and coming up with game plans that are giving people problems. I mean, uh, you know, obviously a lot of focus is on the quarterback when things don't go well, but why is it not going well for the quarterback? It's because these defensive coordinators are messing him up. I won't use the F word. I almost did, but they are (laughs) messing him up. Like they are messing him up. Okay. Going back to middle Tennessee last year, which created the book on defending Tyler Van Dyke. And, um, Listen, when this kid has the chance to prepare for what he's going to see on game day, a.k.a. Texas A&M the whole offseason, um, he's pretty damn good. Like, he's pretty damn good in those situations. When he gets to a stadium and they are throwing all kinds of stuff at him that he didn't see in practice all week, that is where it becomes problematic for Tyler Van Dyke and um, – You know, LT, it has become, I want to talk to you about that as well. It's become a polarizing subject for these fans. Um, (laughs) It's like OHM's law here. Stop with that. He has heard BS. He has been weak versus zone defense since Middle Tennessee game. Stop Mm. it. Mm. Uh, Not just zone defense, but zone defenses that he is not prepared for during the week and uh man oh ohm has been on a rampage on this subject on our message board <laughs> at kingsport.com he's following me all over the freaking neighborhood man uh to make his point uh lt yes you're an offensive coach mm-hmm. okay uh what are you seeing from your eyes with tyler van dyke man it's uh it's been it's at times brutal to watch you know, he has four or five passes a game where you just shake your head and say, what the hell was he, was he, did he not see that? Um, but other than that, he's playing pretty decent. You know, he's playing, I mean, you look at his stats, but it's so four or five plays during the game. I mean, you make you want to scratch your head. And for one, <laughs> but those those two interceptions, or those two interceptions on wheel routes, yes, they made me scratch my head because he also threw the ball inside. But the post where the DB dropped the ball, that was horrendous. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Like, what are you thinking? Like, what are you even thinking? There three guys there. Mm. But the guy dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or I, better yet, again, number three makes a play. He cut, recovered the fumble the previous week. He somehow turns defender and somehow distracts the defender enough that he drops the ball. So I give him credit 
for that, uh, George. Uh, so, uh, man, I, I, I couldn't believe that throw. So, again, but it's those passes that make you scratch your head and say, why, why, why? And it's just – I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get in. And, and, you know, they say he's hurt. Um, but you know, mentally you gotta be sharper than that. You know, it's just, it's just those plays. But other than that, he's playing pretty good. All right. <laughs> so yeah, he's, grading, he's grading pretty well. If you yes. grade him over like 80 plays in a game, he's got those five bad ones, but the other 75 have been good enough to get him good grades. But all right, so people say, ah, I don't make excuses, uh, you know, that he's yeah. hurt, whatever. Okay, three torn ligaments and fingers before the season. Um, a, sore, a hurt knee to some degree, uh, although I saw him on campus this week. He didn't seem to be limping. It seems like that's getting better. Um, mm -hmm. And some people say his shoulder might still be bothering him from last year. So wait, wait, and, and I hate to say this, but I have to because I might look, be a little salty about that NIL deal. So, and a big load of money, cash in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, 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 more than does. anybody else on the team. Yeah. So, like, listen. And again, you've played. You played at every level of football. People get hurt. People play hurt. Mm -hmm. If you're not playing well, and like that wheel route on the sideline, he clearly underthrew the ball. It looked to me like he's throwing it all with his arm. He's not getting his body under the ball. And and I was talking to a quarterback that today that kind of knows what he's talking about yeah. and I'm not going to say his name, but he, he won a Heisman trophy and we were talking <laughs> about everybody wants to do the sidearm type deal. Now the, 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 uh, the Kansas city quarterback, you know, Mahomes sidearm deal, Lamar yeah, right. Jackson deal, the little slip it out there, man, you got to throw that ball. And that, that, that those interceptions, those two on the wheel routes, he didn't throw it. And you know, hey, if you see that coverage, you can throw the ball towards the sideline. So where if your guy doesn't catch it, it goes out of bounds. You don't throw it inside where either the corner can undercut it or the safety can come down and get it. I mean, it was just two bad throws, and you just that's when you go. But are injuries a factor with with, with like can he legitimately be hurt? and have it affect his play. I mean, is that an excuse? Is that something that can't be an excuse? I mean, you 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 have to be able to, you have to be able to play hurt. Um especially if you're have, if you have uh some you want to go to the next level. Right. Put it that way. And they're going to look at that because they're all hurt. You yeah. know, and and you just can't be a hundred percent all the time. You you got to be able to play hurt, and you can't use that as an excuse because gamblers don't want to hear that. True fans don't want to hear that. Right. Uh, bandwagon jumper fans don't want to hear it. Is it a it's, mental excuse? thing? I you know I'm not sure with him, um, but it's something because you know he's not playing uh, those five plays that you just can't you can't wrap your finger around it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, I, I, you know, as much as I want to give him props for, you know, winning the games, it's those five plays that I, I, I say, you know, the team won the game, you know, you played with Dan Marino, arguably mm -hmm. the greatest quarterback, you know, I mean, I know Tom Brady and there, you know, obviously he's got company in that conversation, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but Dan Marino was one of the greats of whoever mm -hmm. played the game. Uh, did he have a good game every game? No, no. Okay, so he, he, what is is it realistic to expect a quarterback to have a great game every game? Um, no, it's 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 truly not realistic. But when you come into the season with so much uh, behind you, and and you know you were going to Alabama, and you got this big NLI deal, and all this stuff, and all this talk it tends to fall on deaf ears when you make mistakes, you know, and no one wants to hear all that, you know, because you came into the season, you, you, you were supposed to be the guy. Um, and, you know, but comparing him to a Dan Marino, I'll take a, uh, I'll take a not on Dan Marino any day <laughs> over, over him. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, no, I wasn't doing that, but, 
But the Canes, listen, the Canes fan is up in arms, okay? This has been a toxic conversation all week. And and, and I'm glad that uh, Jay Jr. Barr 215 brought this up. The whole line is playing well. There were yeah. plays out there where they were blocking and they were just standing around because they, they were just knocking the hell out of people. And they're playing – and give Mirabal, the little short coach, a lot of credit because yeah. he suffered through last year. And this year is so much better. That's so been the difference better. between winning yes. and losing, that yes. offensive line. But yes. but the Kane, plan, the Kane fan is apoplectic over the offense, over the quarterback, and uh, nobody more so than our voice of the fan, Bruce Warner, who I'm going to bring bring in now. He's yelling and screaming. He hasn't shaved in a week. Uh, you know, he's got the, he's got the, the grizzly look working here and, you know, that's cause he's fired up. You could kind of see the veins coming out of his throat there a little bit. You know, uh, <laughs> Bruce, your, 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 your thoughts on the quarterback situation and the, and the offense. Well, I, I see these comments and a lot of these guys are right. I think a lot of the things that you guys are saying is bull. I do. I look at it, I don't care if he's in, unless he's in a coma or in a wheelchair, if you're looking at it down in the field and you see guys covered, you check it down. And now all of a sudden we're hearing the offensive coordinator talking about checking it down. Why haven't you done that with this kid in the last four or five games since he started to crap out? Why? What are they doing in practice all week? Just throwing bombs? This uh, Did you see? You guys were. You saw the game. He had Brashard Smith wide open in the flat, and he threw it down the field. And if you look at the replay, Brashard was pissed. He went like this. He was mad. He didn't say yeah. anything. He was furious. And then a few plays later, he sees Fletcher in the flat. Fletcher's too close to the to the sideline anyway. He throws the ball. By the time he catches it, they're on him. He ran for like two or three yards. Bang, he got hit. But that play should be in your arsenal. He should be looking to check it down instead of throwing it into double and triple coverage. With the two deep safeties, they have to start working from underneath. And, and that's why I said to you before the show – Put some speed guys out there, little middle screens, screens, throws to the flat. Not those side passes, but you got to do something. I mean, I think Riley Williams is good enough and talented enough to run some crossing routes. Do something like, like Mallory did to stop this kid from throwing the ball all the way down the field when you're not covered. 100%. But I got to say a couple of things. I don't like that hands on the head and piss that I didn't get the ball stuff. And and that's because everybody's telling Brashard Smith he's Tyree Kill now. Ne- never show up your quarterback. Never. 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 But, you know, he's that's got everybody right. telling him. I understand what you're saying. That's not right. He's got okay. everybody telling him he's Tyree Kill now because he made a good run. Oh, is, is that what they're in, saying? That's what they're saying? Yeah. It's, it, 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 I, don't it, care, it, I don't care who they are. You're, 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 you're sitting here Get yelling at me before the show. You're yelling at me before the show about a kid that's going to get that's being redshirted this year, Christopher Johnson, that he's got to be out there. We're supposed to have six running backs <laughs> eating on game day. We're supposed to have six receivers going crazy, running so you're all over. You're telling me you wouldn't use Chris Johnson in the flat with his they speed. can't use Chris Johnson, Brashard Smith, Ray Ray Joseph, and play the real running backs too. Okay. Right, please, and play please, Jacoby please, Jacoby you or your wife sending your drugs you're taking. But let's bring Lamar out of retirement and throw him out there too. Jeez, okay. I said one guy. You're throwing a whole freaking team hey, out there. Hey, by the way, I'm yeah, just reading the comments. And I'm, I'm just reading the comments. And Dolph, Dolphin Derek, I get what you're saying, but I also know what you – your your son's a quarterback. So you're trying to uh, just prepare yourself for what can happen later on down the road. I, <laughs> and we are supposed to support the quarterback. But when, uh, when they do have a, a – a, a solid, and I do think the kid is a solid backup. He might not know a lot, but I think he's shown that if you manage the game for him, he can go out there and maybe win a ball game for you. The the, the good solid backup that's behind him. But I get you, Dolphin Derek. But I know your son's a quarterback and he's growing, and uh, you're just trying to get ready because he's going to be in that situation at one point. And uh, the, these fans are brutal. But that's that all comes with the position of being the team leader. All, all, right, I'm saying, guys, all I'm saying is, look, the tech game now is everybody's doing the same thing. So instead of us having to react to them, why can't we change this up and make them react to us? Change it up. What are you doing all week? They come out. They came out flat again. Reminded me of Manny Diaz. What's going on well, with this team? Well, I'll tell you, Coach LT. 
Don't Coach LT, me. I got another one for you. Okay. okay, so so all this yelling and screaming about the quarterback is masquerading something that that Bruce either intentionally or non intentionally just made a great point about. That is okay. Hey, 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 give me some credit for goodness sake. You've known me for forty <laughs> well, years. Well, because I'm watching the same thing. Okay, I'm watching eight. I'm watching seven guys at, at least dropping 20 yards down the field, yes. taking everything yeah. away down the field. Okay. And I'm watching Broussard Smith out there by himself on one flat. And I can't remember who it was in the other, but there were two guys open on one of those plays. Yes. Um, where is the yelling and, and screaming? And, and I don't even know who they have up in the box because all the position coaches are on the field. Yeah, but <laughs> somebody needs to be screaming to Shannon Dawson. Shannon, oh. they're not even covering our flats. I'll do like, it. Right. <laughs> like, like there's there, there's nobody within 15 yards of our backs and tight ends out in the flat. Man, let's let's let, let's make them come out of these mm -hmm. uh, zone defenses where they where they've got every zone downfield, double and triple team, and let's let's hit the flats. We can pick up 10, 15 yards at a pop by going well, sideways. Let me ask, let me just make sure I got this because it looks like the 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 knock or the formula is to drop as many as you can and let's hopefully he tries to force a throw. And he's been doing it. And that's you know, you look at some of the throws he's had, he's had the time. It's not like the this pressure, but he's just he, he just forced it. So there is some, there is a lot of truth to, to Bruce and there is some truth to Gary. So I'm going to be in between here. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it's one thing to say, hey, he's forcing the ball down the field. But uh, I've considered this joint blame because somebody has to be telling him. Don't force the ball down the middle of the field. They're dropping back. Let's go to the flats yeah. for a while and get them out of that. But I, I like what Caesar said. This would have been a great year. For tight ends. <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> hey, Gary, you remember we played App State up there and we came out and they were stacking that box in like the first 10 plays, other than the, the run for a touchdown on the first play. We were going to the sidelines to get them out of where they were. And, and that's an offensive person who knows how to, to attack a defense. No matter what they're throwing you, there's an answer for it. But I haven't seen this. I haven't seen. I haven't seen this from Dawson. Now, I thought he was tremendous against Texas A and M, but I don't know what yeah. happened. You he know? he had he had a, a bad game the other day, and I, and I, he had a bad game against Georgia Tech. Um, to me, he's had six. He's he's six six out of eight. He's batting about seventy five percent so far in his first year at Miami. That's what a C. Okay, um, mm -hmm. Idri had the one bad game at North Carolina where he, he wasn't prepared for the hurry up hurry up offense. Um, he's, I think seven out of eight. So I'm giving him a B plus. Um, but I like these coordinators. I do think that they're learning their personnel. I do think they're learning the league a little bit. I think there's an adjustment period going on. No, I'm not making excuses for them because they, no, I'll, I'll give you in my, another thought, Gary. I think you guys are both agree. And these guys on the, on the comments, we don't have a quarterback like the quarterbacks we've been playing against who could take off and make eight, 10, 12 yards if they have to. No. State well, we got we have enough guys to give the ball to. Like I understand it, that, but he can't yeah. create something out of nothing like these other no. guys. Kid, you know, no, he could dump it. It. What he could dump it to these other guys. Yes, I mean, but I'm saying these yeah. the quarterback last week made some great plays with his feet, and we don't have that. He's not gonna he's hurt, he's not going anywhere. So I think that's a that's a problem. We just can't correct it. We don't have the right guy back there. KLT. Now we're yeah. going to NC State Saturday, a game they have to have. You got to have this one, right? Yeah. I mean, Oof. you got to have it. You're getting your, you want momentum going to Florida State. Yeah. Uh, you want to get the, the the locomotive back on the tracks. You're on game nine. You're supposed to be getting better as the season goes forward. I don't think this team right now is better than it was against Texas A&M, uh, if, if we're being honest. We're right. coming off these two straight overtime games. They were not better. Than they were against Texas A&M. You're supposed to be getting better. You want to be better. This is the time that it has to start showing this weekend. Do you have a quick hook if he's not playing well in the first quarter, or do you have to stick with him and go? Well, That's it. he's not going to answer it. Speaking <laughs> as a coach that has has to make a tough decision. I mean, <laughs> I just said earlier, you do have a good quality backup. And if you can manage him, and sometimes, and I, I do believe this from being around some some good quarterbacks, sometimes going to the sideline 
you can see things a little better if, if things are cloudy for you you know um now muddy what we, 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 we have given gino the hook hell no nah, because we had frank costa behind no nah, we ain't giving you the hook, bro <laughs> but um <laughs> we this kid that's behind him i think if he if we can manage the game with him i mean it's not that bad but it's it is a and who knows he might be able to take more uh with mental capacity uh out there now but um if he's not playing well, you know, you got enough weapons. That's a tough one. He could I'm, be playing I'm, I'm, let me, poorly let me think about that one a little bit. Huh? I, yeah. I mean, he could be playing poorly and we're still winning. Poorly, yes. I, well, my interpretation of what Gary said was he's thrown two picks in the first half. I think then it may be time. But if they're if they're winning or it's a good game, he's just hitting missing a few passes, but he's making the right reads, he's throwing to the right guy. Um those things, I don't think you take them out. I don't think so because he could still win the game. He could throw for 200 yards and a half, but it depends on what he's doing. And, and he's, then you he's not been an interception machine his whole career. He's, he's had a few, some bad games, right. no doubt. So we'll see. I don't know and, what, I don't know what him and Lashley had cooked up, but uh, you know, it, they, they were on the same page. It was a uh, very so. simple system. It was a simple and, system. And they were doing a hurry up. These teams couldn't substitute. Yeah. They were way off balance. Every time oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I gotta address something. 19 and 3 as a starter. Okay. Frank Costa. Good for him, but he wasn't good enough to play with me. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> shit. All right, well, I saw yeah. I saw another Frank Costa in practice. So I, 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 I've been here. I've been I I have been here a while, a while obviously around Miami football. And uh there is one DB that I remember oh, that yeah would absolutely love a quarterback that would throw the ball right in his hands. You know, I mean, I mean, th th this guy was a ball hawk. This guy was at the right place at the right time. This guy made the play. Yep. The play. The play that the play. will never be forgotten in Miami Hurricane history. Like the greatest play. In Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kenny Calhoun. Hey, what's up, Kenny? Welcome. Wait, you got Kenny, you got your mic muted. Okay. Hey, hey there, we go. There, there, there we go. There you go. Cruz, LT. What's up, Gary? What's up, Thank Kenny? you for you having me. Very well. Very well. Man, well, you know, all again, of a I started getting like my heart was racing, and I'm thinking, <laughs> did he really get his fingers on that ball? I, I <laughs> see that play in my head. It's good to see you, my man. Good to see you, Kenny. Oh, yeah. Well, good to be well, good, good to be seen. Here's the deal. That's you know, you and we, we we're gonna start off. We're gonna we're gonna get to the play, but you coming to the to the University of Miami out of Titusville Aspen. I got a question for you. Okay. Um <laughs> was Al Warnicky somewhere around there? Yeah, you, yeah, he yeah, Al was coaching Titusville uh Terriers. That's our cross town okay. rivalry. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. I went to okay, Titusville. He, he was my high school coach. Oh, very he was my good. high school. Yes, yes. All right. So that's Okay, so I want to get that question out the way first, and now we can get into this whole thing about, okay, the man who made the greatest play in UM history, why did you come to the University of Miami? Let's hear this story. Well, I, 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 I'll tell you, um, you know, it, it wasn't that hard. Um, they stayed consistently recruiting me throughout the mm -hmm. season. Uh, they, they came to my basketball games. Uh, so uh, they they showed that they cared, and the other other schools kind of tapered off, and um, they showed love. Now, in the whole recruiting process, did they tell you? Because you played linebacker, did right. they tell you that you were going to make a switch, or was it any talk of that? No, no, no. It was just, um, hey, come play football for the University of Miami, and. Uh, We lose him. He froze up. Back at you. Oh, there we go. You're back. Go. Okay. So it was come play football for the University of Miami. And what That's right. we lost you for a second. Yeah. So um coach Tom Olivadotti uh recruited me the whole way. You know, he's our linebacker coach, uh, defensive coordinator. Um excellent coach. You guys have heard of that. Um mm -hmm. no, you know, I just I, I just believe in what he was telling me. And um 
he told me Howard's uh, dream, what he had, and, and I, I, I fell for it. I, I believed it. It's, it's what I wanted in my four years. So I felt me being a part of what they already had, it, it was a possibility. So I bought in. And, sure. and when you say the the obviously we've had some of you um the guys from the your class and stuff on the the dream the what howard snellenberger had of winning a national championship i mean you got you get there and you're just like can we because in your mind you know you're a freshman you're trying to think of all these possibilities but did you truly believe at that point well yeah i, I believe the whole time you know so you didn't really have time to think when uh when i got there in august it took me about 30 days to become a man uh mm. with the uh the program that we had down there the practices uh the three a so, days three a days yes yes <laughs> yeah, that, that's a true story and, and i know and truthfully that that helped us in the fourth quarter um defensively mm. we we only allowed 10 points in the fourth quarter all year uh, so we 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 did well. We shut the teams down. And you so and you so you became a two year starter there at the three. University of Miami. Three, I'm sorry, three year. I don't want to yes, take sir. nothing from you. No, no, three no. year starter at, at the University of Miami. Um uh, and you saw the rise of the program. I mean, what what do you think, besides how it's vision, what do you think that really made that you guys really truly believe was it? The team, the guys you're bringing in, the, 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 to being together. I mean, all these factors. Let us talk to us about that. Well, you start at the top. It was Howard. You know, um, he was so consistent. Uh, he had a program. You know, he's won uh, Super Bowls. Uh, he brought a, a pro style offense to college football that uh, it hadn't been displayed in such a manner. He brought in Jim Kelly, who was great from the start, and he just surrounded him with the pieces uh, to 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 win at the college level. And we, we pretty much was um, we couldn't be defensed. Yeah, that's true. You know, just think if if Joe Paterno had told him, yeah, you can come to Penn State and play quarterback. This might not have happened. But he told him you're a linebacker, so he said, I'm not going there. And he came to Miami. That's true also. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gary, Gary, you were there, right? I was there. <laughs> no, I, it was – go ahead. I was, a true, I was a true freshman that year at the U. Nice. Right, yeah. No, it was just the, um, the conditioning. Uh, we were the best – a uh, condition team in America. We had the best coaches in America. Uh, we studied film like uh, no other, um, and and it all came together. I tell you something that you guys you know may not have thought of lately. Um, we lost that first game, you know that, but we won eleven straight games. We didn't have a bye that season, so mm. we were able to at the end of the year get healthy. Uh, we won ten straight. Uh, you know, no buy. So early in November, we just rested, rested, got healthy, and put a you know a product on the field that uh, shocked the world. You certainly shocked Nebraska. The seventeen nothing. <laughs> certainly shocked them. You know, and they were they were supposed to be the greatest team in the history of college football. I, that's what they said at the time. But uh, I mean, I know Lamar wants to get to that play. I, I kind of want to know how you prep for that play, what you yeah. saw, what was your reads on that play to get to the. We all know you tipped the ball. So listen, um, it's coaching, right? So they they ran that play in a desperate situation uh, before. So we actually studied that play and we rehearsed the play, and we we called the defense fifty five double dog trio. And what that means is, the, you know, linebackers is a double dog. They blitzing double the fit, blitz. 55. That's the, the front. And, and the trio is where the free safety and the strong safety uh, combine coverages. So uh, how, how we design our defense, I, I normally always man up on the number two receiver counting from the outside in. So that was Urban Fryer because he was the slot back. So I played him most of the game. In that particular formation, that they would 
run Irvin Fryer to the safety and Jeff Smith out to the flat. So we actually uh, practiced that play and knew in a situation like that they would run it. So we were already conditioned and, and prepared to, to defense the play. It's just that we had to go out and make a play. So listen, I don't, I don't take all the credit. And before the play, I, I, I asked the Lord to help me. I said, God, help me. <laughs> listen, and at that time, what I heard was the ball is not going to Urban Fryer. So that, that allowed me, you know, the, the confidence to just make, make a play. But I, I, I was spoken to and I just reacted. We were in the right defense and it all worked out. So you were supposed to be on Fryer because you were. And you spoke to somebody up above and they said, let him go. He's the number one receiver in the country. And you were on Smith and took the ball away. Is that is that what you guys did? Well, yeah, but the play was designed for that that uh, situation as well. So that's exactly what happened. So, you know, the coaches made a good, good call. God made a good call. And I made a play. And you got so, those two fingers. Are you in the Hall of Fame at Miami? I am not. All right, well, get those two fingers bronze, Gary, and then put them – Put it someplace in the in the locker room because those fingers should be in a whole thing. So, how, so, how, Mr. Calhoun, how, how close? Was yeah, that? how close? Yeah, like like you, this like how, how much of those fingers did you get on that ball, Gary? It was a, a you know, I I uh, I measured by the pressure when the ball hit my two fingers. I had uh, five pounds of pressure from the ball, you know? So it right. was a, a lot of pressure. So I knew I I changed the trajectory of the ball right. uh, based on the, the pressure of the ball hitting my fingers. It was, it was a solid two finger hit. Wow. So, so, you know, as, as a coach, um, I, I, cause I was told this a long time ago, the night before the game, you visualize your assignments and adjustments so that when Saturday comes, it's going to happen just like that. You know, you, you, you know, you're going to, that, that game winning touchdown or that, that play where the quarterback throws up, you're going to jump up and catch or being a defensive back. You see that, you see the formation go, Oh no. Oh, I can't believe they about to do this. Oh no. I studied this. You, uh, you saying that you, you knew what it was, but you asked <laughs> at that time, at that moment, God, <laughs> I need help, help right here. That's right. I need help. Needed the help. Yeah. And so, it, it, you know, it, it was, listen, you, you take nothing from Nebraska. I, I truly yeah. believe that they, they were, you know, they are, they were a great team and, you mm -hmm. know, one of the best teams in, 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 you know, in years. Um, I was physically beat up that game. You know, it, I felt Nebraska, you know, I felt mm -hmm. what they brought to the party. So it was nothing. Um, it's just that we were so conditioned. And as the, as the, the day went on, you know, uh, the teams lost ahead of us uh, and it just cleared the pass for one and five uh, to be great. You know, um, we did what we needed to do and win, but it was all orchestrated by Howard. He, he already conditioned our minds to be at that game to be in that position to do what we did. So it was it was a preconditioning for for you know a couple of years. Let me, let me, I've always wanted to ask the the older players that were there before me uh this question because we felt some kind of way about teams like Nebraska and everybody else who had better stuff than us. And I'm talking about better facilities. Uh, better jerseys, better combination, better helmets, all kind of stuff. Because we we felt like, okay, we're gonna kick your behind because we ain't got nothing, and we just right. here to play. We we here to kick your butt, and you got all this crap. Did y'all feel that way? Because I, if I know when I was there, it was not the best. It had to be not the best one in the beginning. No. So listen, we, we had the raw materials. Uh, coach yeah. Reganon, he was an awesome strength co coach. Uh, we, we worked high intensity. We got that from uh, Penn State. Uh, we just wear, you know, muscle failure. It, it was, you know, a, a fantastic workout program. 
Um, so we didn't really have the time to think about the the, the facilities um, because they had us conditioning and and lifting weights. So our, our mindset was just to grind. You know, it wasn't about the facilities. It was about to get go on the field, make plays, and win. You know, Kenny, just real quickly, you just told us that you were prepared for that last play because you had seen it on film. Did you guys prepare for that fumble, Ruski? And if you did, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> no man, we didn't see that one. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Listen, listen. What what Howard said is, we're gonna kick their ass. They had to resort to that to score. We oh, got yeah. them. That, that's a difficult comment because yeah. Oklahoma yeah. did it to Miami in '87 for the '88 when they were and they beat Oklahoma. That, for that, that means they're desperate. Yes, that's right. Right. that means they're that, desperate. that's right. Right. Yeah. It, it, it worked, but it, it made us feel good. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, I mean, hey, Tom Osborne is a great coach. You know, don't take nothing from the wizard. You know, right, correct. Yeah, he, he you know, it's, it's other great coaches out there, and, and he he got a right to be great. He's won at that time. They won twenty two straight games before mm -hmm. we beat them. Were you shocked, or the coaches shocked that they went for for the two instead of just the tie? They would have won the title. They would have probably been the national champ. No, you weren't shocked at all. No, not at all. We we didn't expect them to kick the ball. You know, you know why. Because we were the Cinderella team, mm. no one expected Cinderella to beat Nebraska. Yep. So you, you kind of feel like, uh, you know, I'm I, I'm talking about Tom. Like, yeah, man, we got that's Cinderella. We supposed to beat them, you know. So you kind of right. kind of lose sight of you know what's at stake, maybe. And and, and there's nothing wrong with going for the win. I, I would mm -hmm. always pretty much go for the win, you right. know. So you got to applaud for the doing that. Once in a lifetime. Yeah. Anyway. Who wants to back into a national title? Come on, man. You got to well, win the day. I don't know. Maybe they felt a, a, a tie with a team that was like a 15 to 17 point underdog. I don't know who else was, was next. Uh, to uh, it, was, it was uh it was uh, Auburn. They were number three, but they won lackluster league. Like 12 7 or something like that. Right. Yeah. Right, I'll applaud t Tom till the very the bitter end, man. I mean, he, that that was that was the way you want to try to win a national title. Yep, it absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, so b before I talk about what happened after the play, I want to go back to this. What so what other schools did you uh, visit? Uh, what other schools were interested, and did you go on any other visits? Well, yeah, you know, Florida was in the picture. I, I went to camps there, Florida State. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it in state, you know. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, letters from everywhere. But, um, you know, really my heart was going to the Gators. But, um, you know, like I said, they uh, they pulled off on the recruiting, um, had talks with my coach to see, hey, what's my best avenue? And he said, hey, go go to Miami. So um, was, that's that's what happened. Was Chris Collinsworth? Um, what what school did he go to in Titusville? He, he was he, he was there. He was um, a quarterback at at uh, astronaut Wilbur Marshall. Okay. I played I played with Wilbur too. We were yes. teammates. Wow, that's that was uh, and so you had all that Florida connection going on right there. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. The coach went to Florida, but his wife went to Miami. The head coach. Judy Donnelly, okay. Jay Donnelly, you, you know, if you heard that name, he, he was a great high school coach. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So now it may, it, you know, cause I always wondered why with like Wilbur being over there and, and Chris, you came South, you That's know, right. cause I know it, it, it kind of like mine, it's a tough decision. Florida has a lot of weight in this state. And even right. back then they had more weight. I think oh, right. Like, Pell was the coach. Right. Yep. Give them hell, pill. Yeah. Give them hell, pill, and and give you a car and all that other stuff. But anyway, <laughs> we gonna. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so the fact that you were able to come down to Miami, and and win a national championship, and and be the star of the game, what was that like? When you laid your head on that pillow that night. Truth be told. That's it. That's <laughs> it. We, truth be told, that's it, Bruce. I, it, it didn't happen. We were up, man. We were up. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't sleep. Sleep after that. And, and, and look, yeah. you had you had freshman Gary out there too. He probably was somewhere running around, I probably was. starting his whole interview process. Hey, what does it feel like? 
<laughs> oh yeah, no man, it was a great feeling. We I was, I was a senior sleep. by then. <laughs> oh, you're a senior, okay. Yeah. So it it was a great feeling. I mean, did you guys go stay on campus, party on campus, or off campus? Yeah. So we we pretty much stayed on campus. You know, it mm-hmm. wasn't a done deal as far as the national championship right. at that time. That you know, the polls had to vote, and uh, so we learned like a couple of days later that you know we we they what they voted us in. And, uh, you know, that's when we were able to really celebrate, you know, because we we, we celebrated the win, but, you know, it was more at stake. And, and that really um, made us feel like men. And what was that like to walk around that campus after that? I mean, that that had to be a, a great feeling to, to be able to walk that campus, knowing that now everybody knows your number, your name, your face. Yeah, th- this is what I tell anybody, you know, it it it, it made me walk with a purpose. And mm. I think everyone should walk with a purpose. You know, you, you got a purpose and when you walk and so have that purpose and keep it, you know, mm. just don't walk and have a purpose and walk. It gave us a purpose. We're champions. So we got to walk like champions. That, that was a purpose to to walk uh, and and know your direction, know what you're doing stay focused so um, you can't really like lose yourself in those situations so um it, it was a, a lot of fun with the the student at students you know recognizing us and uh this being you know it was a city type of win you know yeah. the city mm-hmm. was behind us i mean it, it was more of a city i mean that orange boat and and it was a home game for us you know even yes. though we were the away team Mm -hmm. Uh, the fans, the city, I mean, all season, they were just behind us. So we had to walk in a manner like champions before we were champions. So the the walk never stopped and I'm still walking like a champion. Well, you should be (laughs) because 40 years later, we're still talking about it. You look great, I've like never seen you not walk like a champion. (laughs) Man, shoot. Yeah, that, that was the purpose of me being there. Yeah. Uh, so you, so Howard leaves. I mean, so that, that whole announcement, you know, when Howard goes on, uh, how do you think that, that, that the core of the, the guys, I mean, how did that, that, it looked like it, I wasn't there, but just watching the 30 for 30, it looks like it just hurt, you know? Oh man. Seeing- yeah, man. Yeah. It was, it was, um, it was business. How about that? Yeah, it was yeah. it was the business part of it, you know, and um, you have to respect that. But man, it was it was it was crushing, and and um, you know, it's something that you just have to deal with, um, mm-hmm. you know. So listen, you got to just hold on to as long as you can, but nothing is forever. So um, mm-hmm. we we had a great situation there. He fulfilled his promise. So. Uh, the University of Miami uh, took money and did what they did, which I'm okay with starting the the, the, the basketball program. But just uh, you need to involve everyone in in those processes. You know, when mm-hmm. you're taking the money proceeds from the the Orange Bowl, and um, you know it, it happens. Well, we we didn't we didn't lose. We we got Jimmy, so right. we we we. We were successful with Jimmy. We won with Jimmy. So, um, but it hurt with Howard leaving. It's like yeah. a father figure, you know, great coach. Uh, it, was, it was tough, man. It, it hurt. And all four of us know that he took it to his grave. That that was a decision he regrets. Right. He's right. Great. He's great. He's a, just a great, great cane. But he re, and he did a lot of great things at FAU, but um, got that program started. He right. Took, he took it to his grave. And we all know it, which makes everybody feel a lot better about that. He said, I made a mistake. Then if he right. didn't say it at all, you know, I wanted the right. money. It was, I guess, a, an opportunity for him and his wife. You can't right. turn it back on that. You just can't. But you know what? It hurt him. Eventually. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. He saw, he saw the success. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure he still wanted to be a part of it. Something that he started it and, um, it was built upon, so uh, he he should be very pleased with his efforts. Yeah, I'm wondering how many of you guys that played for him were recruited with by him at those years. Were saying to yourselves or together, "Is he nuts? We're going to win an national championship in five years. This guy's crazy." 
Did anybody oh, talk no. like that? Because when I heard that story, I think, oh, my God, from what? From where they were in 79 and 80? They're going to win it in five years? But, you know, Gary was around. He was there. Yeah. So so the thing, you know, he coached with Bear. He played with Bear Bryant. So the, the what what they they try to do in coaching early on is run 15 to 20 percent of the, the, the football players away. So mm -hmm. as, as far as the condition that they make it tough. They they mm -hmm. want to run those individuals that are not going to be around in the fourth Literally quarter. Literally tough, of right? So, so uh, he he had the core, he had the mm -hmm. core, and the you know the the fly by nights away. They they left and then. They don't come back. There we go. Yeah, yes. So we had, had the pedigree. Yeah. That's what makes it easier to believe a guy like that. Which is what I said all along when they brought over Manny Diaz, no offense to him, but what, what did he have in his in his resume that shows he's a leader, he's a winner? Well, Mario's here now. He's won titles, he knows what he's doing. Um, and so yeah, he, he, you could believe a guy like that. Oh yeah. Look where he was, Super Bowls. He coached with Shula too. So he's Bear Bryant and Shula. You can't go wrong. Yeah, so listen, if, if if you're a champion, man, all you need is an opportunity to perform. Mm. So, you know, he brought a bunch of champions in there, and uh, he conditioned us, and, and uh, he gave us the confidence and called the plays, put us in position to make plays, and, and we won easily, kind of. Uh, yeah. Kenny, 1984 was rough. Yeah. The year after, how, you know, after the championship, uh, the coaches weren't on the same page. Um, like so many things went wrong. <laughs> yeah. If Howard had stayed, mm. what would that 1984 team have been like? Listen, um, we would have been better um, mm -hmm. because we would still had the consistency. Yeah. We we had Howard believed in three C's: courage, commitment, yeah. and co continuity. So we mm. lost a little little continuity yeah. there, and uh, that yeah. that affected yeah. the yeah. flow. Yeah. Um, you guys know it only takes one or two players and that'll take you out of championship status, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so when you lose half your coaching staff and you, you, you got others coming in, learning the system, it just, it's, it's a transitional thing. And, um, unless you're like, um, Barry, uh, not, was that, uh, was that Barry? Yeah, Barry Switzer, right with the Cowboys. Barry Switzer, it, yes. Yeah, yeah. If you like him and you inherit the team that Jimmy had, you know, it's it's kind of easy. You know, I, I I'll say uh, that for uh, Coker as well. You know, when you get what you get and you have it, you don't have to do much coaching. You know, but that, that was tough. That was that was tough losing Howard and bringing the old yeah. coaches in and and. Um, 80, 84 was a tough year. It was Flutie, hell Flutie, and um, mm -hmm. yeah. Frank, Frank Wright and yeah. Harold. Uh, yeah, we had success though. We beat um, Auburn at, at uh, in New York, and uh, we beat Florida at uh, in Tampa, yeah. which was the uh, first nighttime game for ESPN. And that had to feel good, right? Because you know, you, your guys. I mean. You know, you go to Miami and win a championship and, you, you know, you get to face Florida, the team where, you know, you probably thought at one point you were going. Yes. You know, and, and so that had to feel good, regardless of whatever happened and to beat Florida. Anytime you beat Florida back then, it was it was a uh, it was good because it, it gave you bragging rights in the state. Oh yeah, you you alluded, alluded to it. They got the best uh, athletes, blue chips, you, you know, uh, back then. And uh, you know, it was a barometer. You know, mm -hmm. you, if you were able to um, win against Florida, and we, and we thought we could win every year, and I, I've won two times against them. Um, it's a great feeling. Uh, you know, a lot of my um, high school uh, friends and we, we, you know, they went to Florida. And uh, it's always good to be able to say, yeah, yeah, we kick your butt. We state champs, you know. <laughs> that, that, that's a great feeling. You just want to beat Florida all yeah. the time, and, every time. And, and national champ. And, and national champ, because I don't think back then they they got one. So, 
That's, yeah, that's, we that's good we thing. were the first team, uh, Division One in the state of Florida, to do that. You know, yeah. fam, you fam, you won a couple couple before us, but yes. Um, yes. Miami were always trendsetters. I think I think you guys were first, second, and third. Ah, and there three, you go, right? I, mean, I don't know when Florida State or Florida won. Maybe even ninety one for all I know. <laughs> You're right. It might You're be right. right. It might be yeah. right. Yeah. So 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 you go on to work for the sheriff department. I, right, I gotta That's ask correct. you this: Did anybody ever realize who you were? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, in 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 the in the you know working for the sheriff's office, you know, yeah, you get known. So yeah, I I, I was known. Are you talking about his fellow officers? Are you talking about criminals? No, I'm talking about the criminals. Yeah, the criminals. The I know criminals. You, yeah, the criminals. Did they recognize you? Man, I got arrested by Kenny Calhoun. Yeah, man. They 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 talk. You know, criminals talk. They talk. You know, eighty percent of the people that's locked up are there because they were told on. Mm. Oh wow! Really? Wow. Yeah, eighty percent. They they got told on. They snitches out there. Did you ever shoot a gun in live action? No, I never shot live at a person, but yes, I, I've shot multiple weapons lots of times. But not in action. Because wow. if Stephen McGuire was an officer in New York, he, saw, he told me he never shot his gun in all Steve the McGuire, because Steve McGuire spent too much time at the donut shop. He wasn't, he was, <laughs> that's greedy Steve. He ain't trying, I can see him pulling somebody over and go, oh man, you go, go, go about your way, man. I got to get home. <laughs> so, so listen, in law enforcement, you, you got, you know, a, a force you know, uh, fourth continuum. You don't want to go to to your weapon right away. You you want to have a talk game. You know, first is your presence, just being there present. Then you want to talk. Then you have your in, intermediate weapons, and you want to engage in all of those before you go to deadly force. So, you know, you you, you got you know a couple plays before you pull out the the chopper. Mm-hmm. Ain't no coming back when you pull the chopper out. <laughs> no. Well, you know what? So. I was reading where it says that you you have a you're a founder of a, a CEO of the Miami Hero team. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's pretty much, man. Just reaching out, giving back to you know trouble youth, uh, you know high, high school athletes. You know, just being a voice uh, to talk to men and women about you know, life and and the journeys and the challenges. You lose him again? He's locked up for a second. It's been coming back. All right. Now Lamar's gone. Yeah. You know, just that, that, that's pretty much it. I I go around and I talk to kids and, um, you know, just try to enlighten them and give them hope that, you know, life is tough, but, you know, if you uh, continue to do the right things, uh, continuity over a period of time, then you, you give yourself a, a, a pattern for success. Mm-hmm. That is true. Well, I, I can tell you this. I, I'm very thankful that we were able to have you on the show. But I'm, I'm more thankful that you made that play because you open up everyone's eyes to the University of Miami. That play, you win, you guys win the game. Now Miami becomes the hotbed. Right. You know, all these recruits start coming in because Howard showed that we you could win in Miami. And because of guys like yourself, we thank you for the guys that followed you guys. So I appreciate it, man. Thank you so oh, much, Mr. Calhoun. And thank I, I know I'm calling you. you Mr. Calhoun. You got a little mad at me, but – Hey, it's out of respect. It's out of respect. Oh, respect, dude. You're just my little brother, man. I keep telling you, man. <laughs> let's, let's, let's keep it like that, you know? I respect you. You're a Gainesville guy, aren't you? <laughs> That's right. Ocala Gainesville. You're right. Yeah. I am. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. But but thank you so much for coming on tonight and, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Hey, if, if anytime I be up that way in Lakeland and help you, just let me know. I'll go okay. speak too. All right? All right. Appreciate so you, thank, Lamar. Thank you Gary. So much. Great Bruce, seeing you, Kenny. Thanks great for having me. Kenny. Oh, you, oh, you guys as well. This is, we'll he's, do it again. He's just a yeah. great person. Thanks, Kenny. What a good guy. Great guy. Always was, man. Even back back in the day. I don't think anybody could argue that that play was the best play in the history of the program. I don't care what it changed the whole tra- trajectory of the program. Yep. 100%.
the whole <laughs> maybe thing. maybe the, the play that the, that the guy George ran Lamar down in the shirt in the sugar bowl. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lamar was in such a good mood. <laughs> hey, look, if, if I'm if I'm him back in the day, and he's very, he seems like a very humble man, but I would have had me a shirt say like tip drill or something on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have wore around campus. <laughs> Two fingers. <laughs> yeah, they would they, yeah, they would have known. They, 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 they would they would have known about that one. For a while. Lamar, you wouldn't have been on the campus spreading, you would have been all over the city. <laughs> <laughs> All right, LT, let's take care of some business here and talk about our great sponsors on the Lamar Thomas Show. Uh, Let's start out by taking a look at the new Caneswear. Welcome Welcome to to Caneswear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes. Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fan shop. All right, LT Caneswear, man. Uh, God, what more can we say? It's the largest cane store that's ever been created, no matter what you need. I mean, you see it there in the background with Lamar. You see it behind me tonight. Um T-shirts, jerseys, polos, hoodies, hats, flags, decals, magnets, uh, clothes for men, women, kids, uh, babies. Uh, They'll even dress up your pet at Caneswear if you want them to. Um, You need tailgating supplies. They'll give you tables, chairs for your tailgating needs. They have dolphins, panthers, inner Miami stuff. No matter what you need, no matter what you want, you can get it at Caneswear at their new location at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. That's 2655 South University Drive in Davie. It's right next to La Spada's sub shop that feeds Lamar that ham and cheese sub. We got to make sure we talk about La Spada's there. Uh, Keeps LT well um, fueled here for the Lamar Thomas show on Wednesday nights. Uh, Caneswear is always open at caneswear.com as well. So get to that store, 2655 South University Drive in Davie, or go to caneswear.com for all your merchandise needs. And um, LT, we also got to talk about the Florida Beach Bowl right. uh, coming to Drive Pink Stadium in December. Um, tell us about Drive Pink. I mean, tell us all about right. the Florida Beach Bowl at Drive Pink. South Florida. Are you ready for the highly anticipated Florida Beach Bowl? Scheduled December 13th, uh, 2023 at 7.30 at Dry Pink Stadium in the city of Fort Lauderdale. This inaugural event features and showcases uh, the historically black colleges and university HBCUs from the SIAC and the CIAA football programs battling it out on the sun-drenched shores of South Florida. This bowl game is all about uniting and showcasing Broward County as a whole. In addition to the main event, the Florida Beach Bowl is hosting a golf tournament, which I will be playing in, a 5K run, which I will not be participating in, a community concert, and various special events all designed to engage and uplift our community. For more information, visit at www.floridabeachbowl.com. All right. And we All will right. be is hopefully having the guy who created this Florida Beach Bowl. He's a little under the weather, and he was going to come on tonight, but he's a little under the weather. So next week we hope to get him on to talk about it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's going down. It's a great event for South Florida, another bowl game for us. And, uh, they got some. Uh, they got some good sponsors for this this uh, game. All right, and then of course there's the law firm of Rotson and Faxadomo. That's Mickey That's right. on the right. If you That's need, Mickey. if you need Rotson and Faxadomo to represent you, you get yourself in a little trouble, whatever, and you call their number 305-600-3519. Make sure you ask for Mickey. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it, it's the most, it's perhaps the most stressful and disconcerting event that can occur in a person's life. You're suddenly facing a criminal prosecution 
So many fears and, and questions arise whether you have been arrested for driving under influence or indicted in a federal court. Few of us are ever prepared for the anxiety and serious potential repercussions that accompany criminal charges. Although many criminal offenses carry the very real potential for jail time, even the less serious crimes can have a long lasting consequ consequences such as loss of job, immigration consequences, felony conventions. At Ratson and Fasciodomo, they are resort oriented defense firm with a focus on specialized client attention. Mickey and Jude are both well-respected and experienced aggressive, I do say aggressive criminal defense lawyers with a reputation for devoting 100% of their skills and talents to each and every case. Their goal is to handle your criminal matter effectively and quickly, quickly so that it can put the whole ordeal behind you and your family can move on with your life. The lawyers at Ratson and Fastidomo pride themselves in understanding your case that is troubling you and your family as well. And they've been nominated uh, 2000, was it 2014, uh, Florida Super Lawyers for their skills, experience, and passion and dedication and aggressively pursuing the best possible outcomes for their clients. And again, I've known Mickey for a long time. Uh, she's a Florida graduate. She was a gymnast. But uh, you know what? She's a hell of a lawyer. And uh, I, hey, I, 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 I respect her and I would recommend her anytime. And this law firm, uh, she, she does actually, they do a lot of work with, uh, with college students. So if you have a young college student down here in Miami that gets in pro uh, some problems, you can always call them. They'll work for you and do a great job. I don't even know her, and I recommend her. What, <laughs> what, what judge or jury is going to say no to Mickey? Let's be honest. Come on. Not, not going to happen. <laughs> all right, LT, and Williamson Cadillac, yes. the, the dealership where you go to get all your automobiles. Yeah. Uh, can't say enough about Williamson Cadillac. Mr. Williamson has been there, I mean, doing this thing forever. I mean, it's down there past Dadeland. Uh, on US one, you can't miss it. Down by the old Fud Ruckers, right across the street. If you know where the old Fud Ruckers is, you know where Williamson Cadillac is. Beautiful building, great people in there. Uh, Jermaine Chambers uh, started off selling cars. He's uh, now moved up to the finance department. He sold me all my cars. He'll come out and if you need him, he'll come out and do a good job for you. Uh, he's down there. He's it's just like a family, and they they actually. The coaches uh, lease their cars from them. So it, it's definitely in our UM family. So go down there and check them out. Tell them I sent you. Ask for Jermaine. He'll point you in the right. If he's not busy because he's doing, he's crunching numbers now. He's crunching numbers. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, this, look at this. LT. I yes. See it. I, I got this about a week ago. This is real. It's like a, it's like a hoodie that you had last week. It's got the hood on. Yes. It's yes. Really nice. It's really, yeah, it's nice. really, really nice. I don't think lightweight. Is it lightweight? It's lightweight too. And yeah. it's long sleeve. So we're starting to get into this. I got Mark Caesar got I got him a black one and I got this one. But the stuff behind you, it's to your turn your head to your right on that wall. Awesome, baby. You guys gotta go down there and get that. It's beautiful. So uh, you know, we had Kenny Calhoun on, and mm -hmm. he's a player that you remember. You know, that play is etched. In Eddie Kane's fans' memory, you never forget that play. I mean, no. obviously set up everything the University of Miami did in football. And, you know, through the years, there have been other players that that stand out for different reasons. And uh there's one, you know, and I and I'm watching I'm watching Matt Lee play center this year. And I I I swear, like the with the first time I watched Matt Lee, it, he reminded me of our next guest on, on the show who uh, in my 43 plus years around the program stands out literally as probably maybe the guy that played the hardest, the, the guy that brought it like there's no tomorrow. Uh, the guy that forever uh, should be the measurement of a Miami hurricane and particularly a Miami hurricane offensive lineman. Um, and he's going to join us right now. And that is, uh, Casey Jones, uh, 
Boy, I, I don't remember seeing the gray in the beard. I'll tell you that. Wisdom. Uh, wisdom. <laughs> wisdom, guys. Every day more wisdom. Hey, Casey. I owe you a drink, buddy. <laughs> well, I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks when I uh, okay. come back to Louisville. That's right. The Louisville game. Okay. You know, is that has that announcement been made uh, yet, Lamar? Uh, no, it has not been made yet. But it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I got to. Yeah. You, it's yeah. Secret. They don't do yeah. anything right at the U. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we're now to the I, I, how, do you even, how do you even holding it down? I mean, like, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we I don't doing? get it either, but, but, I'll, I'll, but I'll be seeing you guys in a few weeks, and, and Bruce, you'll be able to I'll buy you a drink. Buy, buy me a drink. I appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure, man. So, so Casey, you come in the year. Your senior year. <laughs> the year. Yeah. You come in the year. And from Midland, Texas, how the mm -hmm. hell? I mean, what, what, what about Miami? That with all those football, those great football teams out there in Texas, you come to Miami. <laughs> well, I uh, I grew up around some really good football uh, in, in in my high school, right? So we had a lot of guys go to go to Oklahoma and Nebraska. Uh, Jake Young stands out as one of those guys that was a uh, two-time All-American at Nebraska at center and a guy that I grew up watching. My brother played uh, after Jake and was a center after Jake. And uh, I remember Jake Young coming back from the, I guess uh, it would have been 89. And Miami had played Nebraska in the in the Orange Bowl, right? That would have been 89? Yes. yes. And, uh, you know, our, our uh, freshman team was pretty lively and, this was after Nebraska just got the brakes beat off of them by Miami. And uh, my buddy, my boy Chico stands up and say, what happened against Miami? <laughs> and uh, Jake just kind of like grits his teeth and he said, too big, too strong, too fast. <laughs> and that stood out to me forever, man. That was my first introduction to Kane's football where wow. this guy that I had idolized from, you know, the time I was, uh, you know, probably fifth grade, sixth grade, learning how to play football. Uh, this is the baddest dude I've ever met. And he went up against Miami, and he didn't have an answer for him, right? And uh, that, really stood out, that, really, that really stood out to me, man. That really stood out to me, and I always remember that. So I started watching him on TV. And then uh, another standout, that uh, another guy that from Texas that uh, went to the University of Miami, Jesse Armstead, he, uh, he was a uh, – I mean, he was the number one recruit in the country that year, right? Everybody was trying to get him. And he ended up going to Miami, but my coaching staff, the high school coaching staff that year, coached him in the high school all-star game. And I went and watched that game in Texas Stadium, Cowboys Stadium, and Jesse Armstead made 50 tackles in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> you know, And this was against the best of Texas. This was guys, right. all, all these guys were going to, going to school. They were all going to college. These were all great athletes. And Jesse Armstead made them all look like kids. Wow. So that that always stuck out, like, you know, the experience with Jake Young saying that these guys are too big, too strong, too fast, and then watching Jesse Armstead, uh, you know, just excel. And he was the guy that was going to Miami. You know, that was the place that I wanted to go. You know, I wanted to – you know, I've always kind of done things the hard way, and I, I wanted the, the biggest challenge. And I, I wasn't able to really uh, express it when I, was a, when I was a kid, but I remember listening to – to uh, well, Rusty Medeiros, when he came back for his Hall of Fame speech a few years back, and he said something that kind of stood out to me, and kind of I think I, I kind of felt the same way. I wasn't able to express it at the time, but he remembers telling, uh, you know, he was getting recruited by everybody: Nebraska, UCLA, Michigan, all these big, you know, blue chip schools, right? The blue blood schools, Notre Dame. And he would tell these guys that, you know, sorry, I can't go there because I could never forgive myself from backing down to the challenge that is the University of Miami. And I think deep down, that was kind of how I felt. Like, what kind of a jerk would I be to turn down an opportunity to, to play and compete with the best in the country? Like, what kind of what, – who, who would do that? I certainly wouldn't. And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, especially that first year. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like – you know, we, we get on campus as, as freshmen and, and you know, we go through a few practices just by ourselves, right? We had we had a class of probably I don't know, a dozen guys, fifteen guys. Who, 
in that class? Who was in that class? Uh, so who was in that class with me? So linemen were Steve Hawkman, Ricky Perry, Jay Ina was a defensive Big, lineman. He turned into a Big Rick, Big Rick baby. Rah, the monster, right? Rah. Rah. And uh, Chris, <laughs> was a, he was, Chris Wallace was Steve's uh, little brother. It was a, yes. the Gatorade Player of the Year. Daniel Ferguson. Uh, I think you were talking about Jermaine Chambers, ET, just a just a while back. Uh, Chris Gibson, uh, Daniel Ferguson, Gerard Daphnis, all these guys that I, I've grown to love. Uh, these guys are like my brothers now. But at right. the time, we were all, I mean, well, I was 18 years old, 17 years old, and we were scared to death, you know. <laughs> but, you know like, we go in that big team meeting room that first time, and we see these big cats. I mean, uh, <laughs> we stood out. Everybody stood out. But, like, uh, uh, Pat Riley, right? Pat Riley. Like, what the, what is, what, what's going on, man? I, Mar are, Mario. Mario, like Diego, uh, I mean, Diego, and then all the all the personalities too, and then like the the energy that was coming out of that room. I mean, everybody was, you know, chanting and singing and beating on the desk, man. It was so, yeah, yeah, man, it was incredible, man. But I didn't know what I got myself into. And then I think my first uh, my first practice, right? I think I got in a fight with with um, who did I get in a fight with? Big defensive tackle. Caesar. Caesar. Of, of course, I got in a fight with Caesar. Oh, right? Of course, everybody. Of course, I got in a fight with Caesar, right? And, uh, you know, I grew up where I grew up, one on one football was like part, something you did every day, right? We ran a wishbone in high school. And so we'd line up boards. And then that was like something that was a part of our practice from when I was in second grade on, right? So we knew we had to handle ourselves one on one. And we're doing, you know, I wasn't doing it from a four-point stance anymore in Miami. I was doing it from the shotgun, Dennis Erickson's spread offense. But all those fundamentals are the same, right? right. Getting your hands inside, dipping your hips, learn how to control your body, stand behind a hump move, right? And I, I felt like if I got my hands on somebody, I was going to win. And I got my hands on Mark Caesar. He didn't like it. And I, and for some reason, I tried to I kind of like gave him a little extra afterwards. And uh, he didn't like that, man. He stood up and he delivered a karate kick to my inner thigh. Thank goodness. It wasn't a little higher, man. I, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. But he, uh, we, and then it was a brawl. Like it was a melee between the offensive line and defensive line, and to, like to the point where they had to like separate us for the next practice. That was the first practice, right? That was my introduction, introduction to, to hurricane football. And it kind of set the tone for my entire career, like, you know, being ready to fight every day rising up to the challenge and competing on a daily basis. Right. And so you asked me what, like, I mean, I think all of those things combined were, were the reasons that I wanted to go to university of Miami. I wanted to play with the best in the country. I wanted to test my skills against the best. And then I wanted a challenge that was going to develop me as a, as a football player. And I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I, I saw all these guys go from my high school and from my area, they, they went and played similar football at Texas or Oklahoma or Nebraska. I mean, I looked at Miami, that 1991 team, man, you guys, you guys whooped Nebraska. They were, that was one of the best Nebraska teams that they had had. And they, you know, that's Tom Osborne football. That's football I grew up with. And uh, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't satisfied with the status quo. And we did it. And Casey, and we did it with a terrible center. Uh, Kevin Harris. <laughs> <laughs> There's just there's just guards and waiting, dude. There's no terrible centers. There's just guys that did you know they just moved over to guard. It's all good. That man. guy was all awesome. he was all awesome. Nasty, my man. I love Snasty. Nasty, <laughs> my, my man. So so all those things combined, like you know, kind of directed me to the, the University of Miami. And I'm I'm glad I did, man. I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It was the best decision I ever made in my life, was go to University of Miami. And it's something that I get rewarded for each and every day. It's not just, you know, I, I, my playing football, my, my days of playing football are, are long gone, long, long gone. But from that five-year experience at University of Miami, I got to, you know, I got an opportunity to play professional football in my hometown in Denver, Colorado. I was part of two world championship teams. I got to play football in front of my, my grandma, my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, all these great things. And then, and then after that, I get to continue my football experience at the university kind of coming back and getting to know guys that I didn't, you know, because it was so competitive, I didn't get an opportunity to really get to know guys and, and be a good friend or a good teammate to these guys until my playing days were over. And uh, getting to be a part of the University of Miami Sports Hall of Fame and, and have a leader pos leadership position within that organization 
gave me an opportunity to get to know guys and and kind of complete myself as a as a friend and a teammate and a and a cane. So I'm I'm ultra I'm ultra. I just can't express how much how grateful I am that I made that decision, the best decision I ever made, and I get rewarded for it. I continuously get rewarded for that decision each and every day of my life. But you didn't waste the day. I mean, I I, I was dead <laughs> serious what I said. This is year forty four for me at the U, and yeah. uh, there is nobody that has ever played on that field that stands out more to me more than you from the pure oh. effort that you brought out there every single day. And uh, to this day, I think they still show highlight tapes of you playing. Uh, yeah. to the, they showed the offensive line as an example of the way you're supposed to play. I learned that from these. I learned that from these guys. I learned that from Lamar. Lamar Thomas was a he was a highlight reel every day. He was a highlight reel every game. Come on, Lamar, you know that, right? <laughs> we know that. Lamar tells us every show. I just loved it, man. It's it's true though. Like the the showmanship and like and the, and promoting yourself. And you know, I think when you're young, man, you you like focus on the things that like separate you and make you different. And then I think as you grow a little bit older and you get a little distance from it. And it's not like in front of you as much. You right. you you learn about the things that 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 make you that that, that bond you that make you the same. And I think that's a big part of being, uh, you know, at the University of Miami when you're young when you're compa- when you're competing, man. You're focusing on being the very best at, at who you are as an individual. It's an individual sport geared to a team game, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it, you know, as you get older, man, you you find these things that. Like that experience, as incredible as it was and as different as it was, that 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 experience bonds us for the rest of our lives. And I don't know, man, I know I got friends that went to, you know, all across the country, went to different colleges and they don't have they don't they don't have what we got. They don't have what we got. They envy what we have. And I think a big part of it is, you know, the the competition on the field and then that big, bad, beautiful city of Miami, man, that we all grew up in. You know, and being able to uh, to survive it, both of survive. it, to survive, survive on the field, on and, and off, in Miami, yeah, it is. <laughs> you got to be a you got to be a special <laughs> cat, man. <laughs> I learned how to navigate, baby, and you need teammates. Teammates, that's right, teammates. that's right. And I think, and I think the older we get, the more and more we need these teammates, man. Because I think the, the stuff we're facing down as as we get older, you know, it, the challenges just get greater and greater. You know, I think we all have. We all have these these challenges in our life, and it is it's reassuring to me that I got these guys I can count on the rest of my life, no matter what the situation. Hey, you, Casey, how, how many times? How many started that pushing the truck stuff in the off season? Or there was something about I can't the truck. I can't take that I can't take credit for that. That was Ty Wise. That was okay. Ty Wise, and either there's a guy. I mean, there's listen, man. Everybody's got a story, and that that's another story that you guys maybe should have on that on this show because. Ty Wires was that guy that brought those linemen. I was I was entering the draft. Uh, I was a bit of a disgruntled senior uh, with Butch Davis coming in my junior year, right? I was kind of ready to get out of there. But Ty Wise and Rich Mercier and that group of offensive linemen, they don't get a whole lot of credit. But those are the guys that kind of teed up that 01 championship team with the work ethic and the team building like that that, that Ty Wise kind of kind of pulled out of uh, out of his out of his imagination. And now Ty Wise has a uh, a son who's a sophomore. I don't think we could talk about that stuff on the show. I don't know what what the rules are, but if you guys if you guys care to look up Ty Wise's son on YouTube, that dude's a bad bad dude, and he's going to probably play center somewhere and win championships. And I'm wow. hoping it's going to be uh, somewhere where, where we might have the same interview maybe ten years from now. <laughs> you know, but uh, but it, but Ty Wise can get that credit, man. I think. You know, and the guys that I learned from, Terrell Green was a center before me. No, Snuffy, Snuffy, baby, Snuffy. Yeah, and that that dude. I mean, I don't think that guy gets enough credit either, man. That guy was a a complete offensive lineman. He gave me a lot of, you know, he gave me a lot of grief when I came in as a as a freshman, as everybody did, right? And that was his job. <laughs> but uh, but I, hey, that, I was, was going I was going to get to that, but go ahead. Oh yeah, but that's it. But that's another guy that uh, that's another guy that I learned from, and you know. I just took it. I don't think I said two words to anybody my freshman year there, um, because one, I was like, I, I, I promised myself that I wasn't going to get sent home. You know, right. like that would have been a real shame for me and my family, in my community back in Midland, Texas. 
that you know I'm I'm uh, I'm taking the chance of going out there to the University of Miami, and this is the you know at the time this is the the tops in the country, you know just just won a their fourth national championship, and uh, I made I made up my mind early on that I wasn't going to get sent home, but also I was going to learn I was going to keep my mouth shut and I was going to learn from everybody I could learn from. And on that team, Lamar, your senior year, man, there was a lot of guys to learn from. Like run scout team against uh, Darren Smith, and Mike Barrow, and Jesse Armstead, uh, uh, Caesar. <laughs> you know, I learned a lot from him. Uh, Sap was was kind of coming in there at, at that time too. Pat Riley, uh, Rush Medeiros, who had his uh, had his uh, you know career cut a little bit short, but learning from all those guys and then on, on the offense, KP. Kevin, KP. Kevin Patrick and Derek Cry were mentors of mine as well. And then on the offensive ball, offensive side of the ball, LT, I mean, he, he certainly standing out, stood out as a leader. Our friend Gino Toretta was is always the consummate, the consummate leader, right? He's always going to be there. And then um, you know, just watching those teams, teams work. And the thing with the, that 92 team, man, there's only one football to throw. You know, there's only one football, and there was a bunch of talent on the field that wanted that ball, baby. You know, and I think it takes a special guy to be able to navigate that. Uh, and his name is uh, is Gino Toretta, you know, a leader that could you know, keep everybody engaged and keep everybody uh, keep everybody happy with just one football to throw around. All right, what, what, are you know what it was like going up against Pat Riley and Warren Sapp in practice? Oh, man, school was in session, man. School was in session. <laughs> you know, when I took I took all those uh, all the things that I learned. Uh, in high school, you know, those one-on-one -on -one drills, like all, all I, I found out that all my, you know, eventually you find out like all your coaches are right. You know, they may, they may not be right about everything, but the things that they tell you, the fundamentals that they drill into you, you know, I was running the same offense and the uh, same offensive systems and drills since I was in the second grade in Midland. And all that stuff transferred day one to the University of Miami. Right, like staying in your cylinder, not getting too wide, not getting too extended. Keep your hands inside, keeping your head out of stuff, and I just, you know, and also being able to keep your head in these like pretty intense situations, and also being able to match intensity. You know, I think those are all things that I learned in high school that transferred very well. But I remember, uh, you know, Pat Riley. I figured out what his move was pretty pretty easily. Man, he was a big long guy, and he try to he try to catch an edge on you. And then he'd like slip in and try and do the he tried to do the Reggie White hump on you. And so I figured, I figured that one out pretty quick, right? But he's a great man. He was a, you know, I think you got to learn against all different types of body types. And he was a he's a specific type of body type that if you don't know how to block that type of guy, you're going to be in trouble all day. And he was a smart player too. And then and then with Sap, man, it was like, I mean, I got three years. I got three years with Sap. Three years with Sap. Yeah, I got three years with Sap, man. And that was some of the best football I ever played. It was in uh, out on Green Tree Field, man. You know, Sap and I, and, and I got to learn how to uh, block a little bit. Of, like when he was in a one technique, uh, you know, it's kind of like you're fighting in a phone booth, right? And it's all kind of like short steps. And so I, I learned from that. And then him in a three technique, man. Like I, I watched, I watched him, <laughs> watch him swing over guards to where if I'm, if I'm like on a. If I'm on a slide, man, I got to slide all the way out to like the defensive end almost to get sat, man. He, he was out there fast, but I think you know, I, I I would never have been the as good or whatever. I mean, whatever I was, I was I had something special, and I wouldn't have been as special without facing that competition in practice every day in day out. You know, I I I, think, I, I stand by that. Like I wouldn't have been able to be you know as like a special player at college or in the pros without those two guys. So I got I have a lot of gratitude towards both those guys. All you guys say that, Casey. They all say the same thing. The games are, are, are easier than the practices. I mean, I, they're different, right? But I think you got to be – you just had to – you have to have a mindset. Or I did at least. I mean, I think, you know, for some guys, games are – you know, football is easy for some guys. And I never – I never found a football that was ever easy for me. <laughs> you know, like it was always pretty tough. But it was it – was, Super intense every day at Miami, and you couldn't really let your guard down ever, mm -hmm. right? You always had to bring your A game because, I mean, shit, man, my I'm sorry, I shouldn't cuss. It's all right. No, okay. Okay. This but is the internet. I got you. Yeah. I got you, but you shouldn't cuss. It just, just, just as a rule, right? right. But, yeah, but, right. but, but facing down Pat Riley and 
Warren Sapp, and then there was a guy named Ray Lewis that came in my red, red year freshman year. Right? That's well, that's just that's football to me. You know, they, it's like it happens when the lights are on, right? When in the, when the, when there's eighty thousand people in the Orange Bowl, right? But it happens when there's like you know there's four or five guys at, at a scrimmage, you know, watching watching the scrimmage, and it's just all it's just all ball. It's total competition, and you you're giving your best. And I think that's what kind of develops your skill set. And also, I think it, you know, I think it kind of refines a team as well and sets new standards. And that's what I found when I went to the University of Miami. They had an incredibly high standard uh, for everything. And it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just showing up for games and, you know, 80,000 people were there and you're going to like just roll in and win, man. You got to work. You got to work in the offseason. You got to work in spring ball. You got to work in camp. And then you got to work all week. If you're going to get it done. You know, nothing's. There was there was no entitlement. We're not, I didn't, we never felt like anything was ever handed to us, and we had to fight for everything we had. I got a question for you, <clears throat> as a freshman, because I know this is. I sit in that locker room some days and go. I don't know if I belong. I don't know if I. Can be. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. But but you said something earlier. Yeah. And you couldn't go home. I couldn't no. go home. No, man, not the so shame, man. You got to figure it out. Yeah. So, you, you, so many days, like, you, and you, and <clears throat> I strived for the older guys to know who I was. I wanted them to know. Yeah. And you want to, you know, you, you you walk by me and I say, what up, Casey? You're like, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it was the same way for me as a freshman. I'm like, damn, they know me. So, I, you know, it, yeah. but it was that, it was those moments in that locker room where you sit there after a tough day and you say, I want to be here. I got to be here. I made this choice. I can't go yeah. home, but damn it. It's a, it's a challenge, man. It's a challenge that I don't think anything can really prepare you for. And I think you got to make up your mind really early. Right. And I made my mind up early and I knew I wasn't going to go home. I mean, I would have been known as the one day they're going to build a statue for me in my hometown one day. That's what I keep telling them. But, I, but if I had gone home, they would have, I would have been known as the guy that went to Miami and couldn't do it. Right. And I, I couldn't bear that. I couldn't bear that for me or my family. And I just made my mind up. And then at, at, at one point, um, I think it was that same day, man, when Mark Caesar told me uh, or he, uh, he like tried to kick me and we fought and there was a there was a melee. The, the other part of that story is, is that we were lined up for gassers. And for some reason, man, I got to start giving uh, Mark Caesar the, the stink eye and Pat Riley. He sees me giving Mark Caesar the, the stink guy. So when we're done running gassers, we go in the locker room and I'm taking off my gear and someone comes up to me and says, hey, uh, Pat Riley wants to talk to you, which is kind of already a funny story. Like the Pat Riley wants to talk to Casey Jones. Right. And so <laughs> that's, a great, that's, a, that's a great NBA 80 yeah. story. <laughs> yeah, so, so I get up and I walk over to, to Pat Riley and he says, hey, Rook, you going to lunch? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to lunch. He says, I'm going to stab you at lunch. And, uh, and it just, hey, man, it's funny now. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> I thought he was, I thought I was going to get stabbed at lunch, you know? <laughs> but you know what I said, man? I said, I'll see you at lunch because I, was, I had already made my mind up, man. That they, they were going to have to stab me. They were going to have to kill me and drag me out of that place, man. I was going to make my mark there. I'd already made up my mind, dude. I knew I was good enough to play at the University of Miami. And no one was going to talk me out of it or stab me out of it or do anything that it, it was going to dissuade me from being a, making an impact on that team. And I didn't know, you know, as a freshman, you don't know where your career is going to take you, man. But I applied the same rules that I learned about football growing up in Midland, Texas, and, and I applied them to the University of Miami. And it, it worked. It worked. That West Texas brand of football worked. And then I started open. I opened up my eyes and my ears and I listened and I watched, I watched guys compete at practice on a daily basis. And I created, you know, I think this is what's great about University of Miami too is, you know, I, I created the player I wanted to be. You know, there wasn't anybody, you know, I, I, I think that everybody, Lamar, you probably, you may feel the same thing, man. There wasn't anybody like you before. You know, there wasn't anybody like me before. And at University of Miami, I think they allowed guys to, to be creative and try new things on the field and be different and have personalities. And I think that's something that Miami should pride themselves on, man, because it's 
I think anywhere else, I think you get kind of stuffed into a box or a mold. And in the University of Miami, you could be anybody you wanted to be. And I KC. decided to be I decided to be this 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 crazy character named Casey Jones. Hey Casey, just so you know, all those personalities yeah. yep. turned into the rock. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he did. He got a little piece of everybody, didn't he? He got a little piece of everybody, man. God, I, swear God bless people's eyebrow, I swear the people's eyebrow was mine though. But yeah, man, you know, the elbow, right? The jabroni, all that stuff. God bless him, man. God bless him, man. God bless him. But I, but I, I just, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, that, that whole experience, man, I, I couldn't imagine it, you know, having it anywhere else. I think anywhere else I could have, I would have been too small or too something. I would have been too something. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would have been too, uh, you know, I would have been fighting too much or I would have been too loud or I would have been too this or I've been too small or I've been too short. I would have been too something. But at University of Miami, too skinny. They just, too skinny? Yeah, I would have been too. I may have been too skinny. No, I'm talking about <laughs> the king of the you, you know what I'm Like at the University of Miami, they allowed you. They allowed you you to be yourself and have personalities and 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 develop in the way that you saw fit. And I think what comes out of that is guys like Warren Sapp and Ray Lewis and Lamar Thomas, right? And 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 Frank Gore and and Jeremy Shockey. Right, all these guys with they're all different from all different parts of the country that can come come together and and create these these superhero characters that are all kind of like the mythology that we all know at the University of Miami, and I think it makes it for a unique place and a unique experience for sure. When you come back hey, hey, in two hey, weeks, no, check no. out the center, Matt Lee. Oh yeah, uh, yeah that's awesome, for sure. He's a for throwback. Sure. He's, a, yeah, he's a throwback. To, 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 I'm not saying he was as good as you were, but. Uh, he's he's the number one center in America right now by the Pro Football Focus grades, and um, he reminded me he's like a little bit of a throwback to you. Well, that's a that's a great compliment for me, man. I, I I like the way he plays, and I think he's very aware. I think the guy is probably, uh, you know, he's like kind of a pro playing in a, in a on a college team right now. He, he kind of reminds me of that, and I think at that that position, you got to have a guy that kind of anchors that line and. And is aware and knows knows the offense in and out, and they can kind of direct traffic and help guys out because it's a uh, man. It, football's tough, man. Football <laughs> football is tough. And if you don't have uh, if you don't have natural leaders and leadership positions on the field, it makes it even harder. So I I, I, uh, I applaud uh, Mario and Alex Maribel for for uh, for putting that line together. You know, I think that's something that has been missing at University of Miami. Is you know you gotta have you gotta I think, and this is my bias as being an offensive lineman, but I, I've always felt that you need to build a build a, uh, an offense from the inside out. And no offense to skill guys or anything like that, but you got to have, you got to be able to protect your quarterback, and you got to be able to run the ball. You know, I mean, I think those are the two fundamentals that I think sometimes have been missing in in Miami's offense in the past. And it's refreshing to me to see that happening now. And I know by no means is this a, a finished product. You know, I think everybody kind of gets excited with with Mario and and uh, in in the in this season. I think they're if you kind of take a step back from it, and I can say this because I live in Colorado now, so I'm not inundated by all the information that you guys are on a daily basis. So I can kind of see the I can see the trees and the forest, and uh, you know, I feel they're kind of like ahead of schedule right now. And I think that I can see them uh, putting it putting a team together. And also, I see some personalities emerging on both sides of the ball, guys that are standouts. And that's something that, you know, we probably haven't seen in, in years past. So I, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited on the direction of the program's going, and I'm excited every time I come back and watch Kane's football. KC, you know, you've, this offensive line have played eight games. Yep. They have never played it down together until the first game of this season. So it's quite remarkable. Yep. I don't, I don't want to I'll knock on wood, but we haven't had anybody go down that we really need. But like yeah. you're a you're alignment. Talk to us about how hard it is to gel it's, like that in only a few games. I think I think it's I think it's tough in every room, but I think especially in the offensive line because so much is no so much is uh expected of you. And as an offensive lineman, you're expected to know, you know, what the what the what your what your group is doing around you. You know, especially at center, you got to know what the what both guards and tackles are doing. You know, maybe on the on the as a tackle, you can get away with knowing what the guard, the tackle, or the the tight end and the and the guard beside you are doing. But I think you know, 
when I see college football players now, I, I find them to be far more advanced and more mature than probably we were during that during that time. You know, I, I, I think they may not be as hard nosed. It's a different game. It's not a head forward game anymore. But I think they're much more aware. And I think that they're the coaching has changed a little bit from this like kind of gladiator mentality to being able to work work better together to find those things that you that your commonalities and it, it makes for better teamwork it makes for a better group play so you know it is outstanding that these these kids can kind of gel together um in one season uh, but I also think that's probably part of you know probably part of the system that Mario brings from from his experience at Oregon and Alabama and all the things that he's learned and also, I think that Alex Maribal is an outstanding offensive line coach, and I think his his uh, his tenacity and his personality, um, and he the way he challenges his players brings those guys uh, together, and also sets a standard and accountability that probably these guys have never experienced in their life. And I think that's what you see on Saturdays is these guys being accountable to each other and playing as a team. I, I tell you this, man. You, I, I would love to bring you back some some time because you you you've had some great stories tonight, and there's still some stuff I want to touch on. Yeah. I want to yeah. touch on the push days, you know, and all You're these great. things. But I but I got to touch on this point right here. Yes, I was looking you up. I didn't realize you took meringue in Super Bowl thirty oh, was thirty three. 30, uh, thirty three. Were you with the uh, were you with the Falcons? I was with the Dolphins. Oh yeah, well yeah, we took everybody's ring that year. Yeah, we took everybody's yeah, ring yeah, that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was and dude, listen, man. I just went back. It was the 25th anniversary for the Super Bowl 33 team here in Denver this last year, and I I I kid you not, man. Mike Shanahan got up there. I can send you the slides. He made a did a PowerPoint presentation of how that team's the best team in the history of the NFL, and I buy it, dude. I buy it. Completely and totally, because of the teams we faced in the playoffs that year, we we beat we beat Dan Marino's best team with the Dolphins, with his best defense ever. They were the number one scoring defense in the NFL. And you that ran year. through us like water. We ain't tackled we TD yet. No, no, he still scored a couple touchdowns after the game. Was over. And then we beat Benny Tessaverde's best Jets team mm. that year, also. And then it was a bit of a disappointment when uh, when Atlanta beat the Vikings. Uh, up, uh, you know, they it was. It, I think Morgan Anderson missed a kick, yeah, right? Missed a, uh, you know, that was that was Randy Moss, and then yeah. uh, and Randall Cunningham was Cunningham. I think it was Cunningham. Yeah, I think so. And that was their best team too. But shit, man, we would have beat them too, man. Nobody was going to beat us that year. So, well, so I, well, you know what? What really? I apologize, what really, more, but I'm not sorry. Casey, you know what really pissed me off was <laughs> when we beat you down here on the Monday night, where yeah, yeah. I had the three touchdowns. Yep. Your man Shannon Sharp said, "Don't worry about it. We're gonna be dressing in y'all locker room Super Bowl." <laughs> oh man! Oh he was right. man! It hurt me so bad. He said that. Yeah, man. He was. He had something. I mean, that that game too, man. That was. I remember that game, man. I remember coming down here and I had a lot of people come to that game, and and that was, man. That was the Dan Marino show that night, man. The LT show. That was amazing, dude. But it was. Uh, we I, we felt at that point we were kind of a team of destiny. And it doesn't, you know, there's no excuses for, for flopping on Monday night, but that, that Shanahan, man, he was, uh, he was maniacal in his planning. And he knew, he realized heading into that game that we were going to face you guys and we we're going to face you guys uh, in a cold weather situation, maybe later in the, later in the playoffs. And uh, we didn't, we didn't show too much that game. I think we ran out of the shotgun the, pretty much the whole game that game. And I heard that you guys, didn't even practice. He practiced hats. We didn't practice, practice full pads <laughs> with Jimmy, and we were out of gas when we got out. Yeah, there. man, that I, I learned so much, man. I, like I didn't, uh, uh, it, you know, both everywhere I went, man. When I played football, I played football at a high standard in high school at Lee Tech and Lee, Midland Lee. Played at a super high uh, standard with the University of Miami. And then I went to Denver, man. They had a high standard as well. And we understood the who, what, and the why of what we of, of the game plans. And I probably, I think, probably like one of the more like intellectually advanced, you know, teams as far as understanding the why of what we're doing game plan wise on offense and on defense. So we can kind of 
when we got to the game, we, we kind of understood situational football probably a little bit more. But we did not beat each other up. We didn't, it wasn't a Jimmy Johnson way. We would, we would run full pads. We would run our nine on seven. We'd have probably 10, 15 plays of nine on seven, which is inside run. So we'd bang a little bit. And then we would run a period of one-on-ones in pads. Uh, seven on seven would be in pads, right? So you get that kind of that, the intensity, right? It's all, I think, practicing pre- preparation is all about can you mimic the intensity of a game, but also have the volume and being prepared, right? Being prepared for game time situations. And I've never seen anybody do it better than Mike Shanahan. And uh, I think that's probably why he'll end up being a, a Hall of Fame coach one of these days. Um, but, but, but we were always prepared, you know, our goal every year wasn't to win a, it was to get to the playoffs, you know, it wasn't to win the division. It wasn't to beat Kansas city or a rival or any of that stuff. It was to get to the playoffs. Cause once, cause we knew any, in any type of situation, well, whether we were a wild card or a first seed, if we got to the playoffs, we're going to win that Super Bowl. And that was the attitude we took in those two years, 97 and 98. Mm-hmm. So incredible. Lamar again, man, I apologize. That's all right, brother. But I'm not sorry. <laughs> hell, hey, I'm, hell, I'm still looking for the oxygen mass out there, man. Oh, man. Breathe out there. Different ball, man. Different ball, man. I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, be, you know, going back to, you know, I, I look back on my football career as a dream come true, man. I got pictures of me uh, taking my first steps in Broncos gear and uh, having the opportunity to play where I played in Midland, Texas, and then you know, Ed Hazron of all people found me in Midland, Texas. You know, my mom, yeah. my mom had the, my mom had the, the foresight or whatever to, to know that like not too many schools outside of the region recruited Midland, Texas. And so my mom would, she would take my game fill on the VHS ta- tapes and she'd send them out. And every time that she would send out a tape, somebody would call me with a scholarship offer. And Ed Ogeron called me in my home in my kitchen. I'd, and he he uh, he he offered me a scholarship and and kind of the rest is kind of history, right? But he was the guy that came out and and I think kind of made you know I realized that I may have something special if University of Miami is coming out to recruit me in Midland, Texas, right? And uh, I think you know when but again I I I I could never imagine my life saying no that challenge and that and that opportunity to come to the university of miami defending national champions and with this incredible brand of football with these incredible players like like jesse armstead right the guy that i watched in the high school all-star game like all that i i just think it's all i consider it all kind of a dream come true to be honest with you to be able to to have this kind of football experience that i've had and uh, to be able to continue it you know i mean it, it doesn't just stop now you know, like I come back and I see these guys and I get to know guys every time. I'm getting to know you now, Lamar Thomas. You know, I'm, getting, I'm getting to know these guys that I've, I've got really gotten an opportunity to to get to know. And shit, man, it's been 30 years, right? <laughs> it's been 30 years and, and hopefully 30 or 40 more, right? Before yeah. you go, I got somebody that has something for you. All right. Let's go, Kate. Oh, baby. <laughs> Let's go, Kate. I love that guy. He so when, when I Lamar, you, you talked about the about like having that like doubt or having like uh you know being in the locker room and, and wondering if you belonged, right? I was incredibly homesick my freshman year. And I talked to Coach Ogeron and he told me the story about him. You know, he went to LSU and it was like 20 miles away, and he was incredibly homesick and he left like his first or second week and he said it was the you know the biggest mistake, his biggest regret of his life. Mm. And I remember like sitting in his office and for some reason like that, that resonated with me and I didn't want to have that regret. And that's kind of what, you know, kind of, I think it kind of uh, reassured me and gave me that strength to, to keep fighting, you know, to keep fighting as a freshman. I mean, I show up as this, I was six two two forty man. I was fighting with everybody. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that kind of, that, that coaches like that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if coaches really understand. The, I mean, I, I hope they do. I hope Coach Ogeron, I hope one day I'll be able to communicate that to him, how big of an impact that is and how big of an impact these coaches have on young people's lives. Like, you know, Lamar, you've been a coach before. You're a coach. You are a coach, right? And I think that coaches don't get enough credit for for shaping young men's lives. And it, and, and it's not – listen, man, 
there's a high standard University of Miami, and there always will be. But I still see this as an extension of the classroom. And, you know, these guys are expected to win their five years when they're at the University of Miami. But their experience as Canes is just beginning. And it's what these coaches teach them and how they encourage them is, is how they're going to turn out as an adult. So I think we all kind of got to keep that stuff in mind and keep it in perspective for sure. Well, Casey, when you come back down, yes, sir. You know, you if you go to South Beach, you you'll run into Ed Ogeron because he got seventeen oh, million, and he he feeling good. Big has some pina colada. Big has some pina colada. Come on, Tom. Get in the move, Tom. I love that guy. I love that guy. He's a, he's a special guy, man. I'm, a, I'm I'm looking forward to catching up with him when I get back down to South Florida for sure. Well, thank you for coming on, man. This has been sure. everything I thought it would be, man. You're a great guy. Uh, Appreciate you, you it. Know, I, anytime, man. We'd love to have you back on to talk about some more stories because you All you right. have you have some great stories. But thank I'll you look. again for coming for sure. on and safe travels back down you, here. I'll be back, okay? and I'll, I'll see you. I see you, Louisville week to celebrate. Yes, sir, to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, KC. Always go, Kings, baby. Always. All right, KC, I'll call you before the Louisville game. I'll Oops, sorry. Another guy, man. You can put him on to just let him go. He's one yeah, of those he's, types, you know? He's awesome. He's awesome. Um, I meant what I said, too. I, I've i never seen anybody more relentless than that guy. I yep. mean – and we've had great players at Miami. He was unbelievable. I mean, just unbelievable. And uh, I think to this day, they still show the offensive lineman at the beginning of every year, his highlight tape. Mm -hmm. well, I, sure. I remember I, I remember him and Caesar get, getting into it. And uh, it was just, you know, Caesar trying to pick on a freshman. And, uh, you know, you walk away from stuff like that saying, that freshman going to be all right. He's going to be all right because he didn't yeah. back down. You know, so that was yeah. uh, a positive, you know. So what great stories. Yeah, That's great what story. this show is about. That's what I want this show, to, the platform to be, where guys can come on here and tell their stories of, of why they went to University of Miami and everything that went on and, you know, well, not everything, but <laughs> some of the stories that went on and uh, <laughs> people, can, people can, can, can hear it because it's, it's, it was, it's a great program we, we experienced. I mean, you look at Kenny Calhoun and what – he was able to do coming from where he came from and then make that play that really started the whole believing that Miami can do it because they did yep. it. So, all right, Bruce, um, Close headed, to NC, headed to NC state parting thoughts. Got to cut down on the turnovers and the mistakes. You know, we just can't mm -hmm. keep putting the ball in the other team's hands because they're going to score. I hope they make some changes and adjust things for Van Dyke. I, I think he's going to play a good game. I don't think NC State's offense is ranked that high, so I expect the defense to do what everybody else has been doing. I think we're going to win this game. We've got to win this game. You know, we've had two close ones. We know we can come from behind two weeks in a row. I expect us to beat this team by maybe a touchdown or more, but I don't think it's going into overtime. I just hope that Van Dyke plays well because I know you are – I'm sick of seeing this, reading about this, and talking about it. Let the kid, let him play, and let him do well. He's got to because we have Florida State coming up. We we make the atmospheres for these kids so toxic sometimes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like unbelievable. But yeah. you know what? You got to be able. You know, if you want to be a football player, you got to be able to handle it. You know, and yep. you got to be able to rise above it. And we're gonna find out what TVD is made of. Yep. I think this Saturday. So. Yeah, yeah I, I hope he makes it through this game, and I hope they win. Because I'd hate to see this kid. He's played hard. He's made mistakes. I don't know how much they've corrected his mistakes, like locking on one guy. Okay. But if he plays well, you know, we need to have everybody behind him for four. It's not State. just him. It's not just him. To. I mean, listen, it's they're a not shared. Gonna, they're not going to play Henry Williams against Florida State if, unless they absolutely have to. Ooh. Yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> All right, Bruce. All right. We'll see what happens. Right, we'll see you next week. Right, I'll, I'll talk I'll to you next week too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> we do. It, it, it does become a little toxic sometimes. You know, I mean, it, yeah. it it's going to be tough for him. But but it's it shared, and we talked about it a little bit. Of, you know, early in the show, I look at who's in the box telling Shannon, "Hey, the flats are wide open. Where's the in-game adjustments? It's not just the quarterback. It's all of them together." And yeah. You know, I'm sure they've put in a lot of work this week, and I am also expecting a really good performance at, at NC State this week. Me too. 
<laughs> All right. So let's um let's play a little word association. Right. Uh like we always do. I'm gonna start with Ruben Bain. Man, I you know when Ruben Bain the 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 hype, I was saying, Oh man, this this is this is this is a hype, it's Roland Smith hype machine. You know, I didn't I didn't I thought it was okay, but man, let me tell you something. This kid has to be a freshman All-American. What he's been able to do, you can see the learning curve. You can see what he's learning. Uh, some of those moves, you know, uh, that he's doing, whether taking a guy, giving him the hump move, the Reggie White hump move, or just speed rushing and dipping up under. I mean, some of this uh, running uh, TE games where he's scraping at the right possible it's just it's just been amazing to watch. Amazing and to watch. I think that it's made – I'm hoping that it will continue to make our D-line better. And, uh, you know, there's been an emergence of some other guys, but he's definitely become the leader. Uh, I don't like to see him drop, though. I'd rather see him rush. I know uh, defensive coordinator had him drop one time. I saw that, and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? Because I watch him now, and – they had him dropping. I, you take your best pass rushing. You rush his ass every play. Come on now. But it, what a what a yeah. great year he's having. You know, it's funny. You talk about it rubbing off on other guys. Like I was watching the, in pregame the other day. He's out there with Branson Dean, and they're just mm. going back and forth and practicing their moves and stuff. And you could see that he is rubbed off on Branson as well. And and uh, mm. you know that will continue for two more years. I don't know if we'll have him for more than two year two more years. You could see where this is going with him, you know, most likely, but, uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's special. No doubt about it. All right, LT. Um, I kind of condensed this one into one. Uh -huh. I'm going to just call, get. I'm going to call it the situation. The situation. You know what All I'm right. talking about. Talk to us about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The situation is you got two quarterbacks. You have one starter who came into this year, a all American, uh, or hype, uh, Heisman hype. And then you got the freshman who no one really knew about, but we knew about because all, all the the all the talk was this kid can spin it, he can throw it. And DVD got off to you know a good start, but not great, and gets hurt. Now this kid comes in and wins the ball game, which the ball game he was able to win, you could tell that it was manufactured as far as making sure he didn't make mistakes keeping it simple stupid okay he plays well for what it for the offense was now do we have a quarterback com uh controversy i don't think so because you, you still got your starter out there you want him to play well you're going to make sure he has all the confidence but in the back of your mind if anything were to happen to this kid where he's going through a funk or he gets hurt you don't you feel good because you know you have a guy behind him that yeah. can that can come in and you can manufacture and manage manage the game uh, with it, with a game plan. So uh, I don't think it's a, a, a situation, or it is a situation, but I don't think it's for us as fans make more of it than what Mario and that coaching staff is making of because they already know who their guy is, and all they want him to do is continue to be more Way consistent better. and. And on top of that, if your defense continues to play well and you have these weapons that are emerging, and we'd love to see a tight end once or twice catch some balls, but you have these guys emerging, it should help him. Look, we got at NC State on a Saturday night at 8 o'clock. You got mm. at Florida State. If you win this week, that's going to probably be Saturday night at 8 o'clock. <laughs> you got Louisville coming in here, which is going to be first or second place in the ACC. You might get that one at Saturday night at 8 o'clock, too. And then you go at Boston College the day after Thanksgiving. To me, this is no time to be playing games with quarterbacks. No. Okay, no. They need TVD to be the TVD that we saw in the Texas A&M game. If they mm -hmm. can get that TVD, they'll be just fine. And he has and he has to have the confidence, and that's why you shouldn't play games. So yeah. all that talk, just let him do his thing, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Um, let's do Mario Cristobal. <laughs> you just spelled it out. You ran down those games, eight o'clock games, all big games, but no bigger game than this game 
right here. Right here. This game is important because where you should be, this team would have would, we would have been saying the same thing. You got to beat this team. Okay, this, this is this is a this is a this is a big game for the University of Miami, and knowing our fans, it's a big game for them too because it's you need to win to keep people interested around here. Remember, basketball season starting hell. I think the the damn Heat's playing right now. Yeah. You know, uh, so you got to win to keep the the so called na- the bandwagon Miami fans involved. And that's a lot of them because most of our fans didn't attend the University of Miami. <laughs> this game. All right, LT, uh, we've got to thank our guest, Casey Jones, Kenny Calhoun, phenomenal guests. Um, yes. We thank them for their participation tanight. Uh, we got to thank our sponsors, Canesware, of course, largest Canes fan store ever created. Uh, visit their location at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, which is right next to La Spada's sub shop where LT gets his sandwiches every time he goes to Canesware to do the Lamar Thomas show. Uh, we got to thank the Florida Beach Bowl coming to Drive Pink Stadium this December. And uh, hopefully in next week, we'll be able to tell you what former Kane is behind the forming of that of that game for historically black colleges. We got to thank the law firm of Ratson and Faxadomo, where clients can get aggressive representation from skilled criminal lawyers. Uh, just remember, if you give them a call, ask for Mickey. She doesn't lose. And uh, Williamson Cadillac, of course, um, as well, where Lamar buys all of his vehicles. And then, of course, we got to thank you guys for watching. And we will be back next Wednesday. It'll be Florida State Week. I know one guest you might uh, drum up for Florida State Week. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that one goes. I, uh, we'll see. We'll, hey, see. we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. For LT, I'm Gary, and we will see you next week.